What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I do appreciate you being here. Today I've been doing another Destiny 2 video and today guys I want to try and explain the Chalice of Opulence to all you folks out there who are still a little confused on it and how certain rewards are earned as well as all the possible ways of upgrading the Chalice and the effects each has. Now I do want to keep this as simple as possible to make it easier for you guys who are kind of confused about how this works. Now we'll go in depth on every room, what they do, how certain weapons are rolled and so forth, so stay tuned. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support you can by hitting that like button. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. So yeah, I know some people watching will know more or less everything I will explain in this video but still I am getting questions on a daily about this chalice and how certain weapons are obtained from the menagerie. So I've done a little more research into the chalice, also the runes you can get and what each offers. And also I will share with you guys an amazing spreadsheet which actually shows every possible combination of seg gear you can cook up with this chalice. Okay, so the chalice of opulence. We know it consists of three main nodes which each affect loot drops from the menagerie, slot 1, 2 and 3. We also see that there are 9 nodes across the bottom of the screen, room compatibility, room bonus and power and efficiency. All 12 nodes upon this chalice take imperials to unlock. Now I made a comprehensive video yesterday talking about imperials and how you can get these to the fullest. And if you do want to check that video out, you'll find it linked within the video description. But it does show you the fastest way you can get Imperials, as everything here, as you know, is a lot behind these. So you do need as many as possible. So let's check out the runes. So there are 12 in total. And before we check out what combos these can make and how you can figure out what you need to apply to get a certain weapon or role, them and what they do can be seen on screen now. Also what each does within each rune slot as they do differ and do different things. This is the effect rune of ambition will have when applied to each individual slot. This is what the Rune of Cunning will do. This is what the Rune of Desire will do. This is what the Rune of Access will do. This is what the Rune of Gluttony will do. This is what the Rune of Joy will do. This is what the Rune of Jubilation will do. This is what the Rune of Pleasure will do. This is what the Rune of Pride will do. This is what the Rune of the Beast will do. This is what Rune of War will do. And this is what Rune of Wealth will do. So they are the runes you can get. And as you saw, some rooms drop specific items, while others can drop various items. It all depends on the rarity of the rune. Opening the room compatibility nodes within the Chariot of Opulence allows you to have a chance of getting all the nodes listed here. Rune compatibility 1 adds red runes into the mix, 2 adds green runes into the mix, and 3 adds blue runes into the mix. And before you ask also, the purple runes are the basic ones. Each rune is represented by a colour. 
which you can see on screen now, so you know what each rune compatibility unlocks. Red runes are ambition, cunning and gluttony, green runes are desire, war and pride, and blue runes are access, pleasure and wealth. Ok so how do you figure out how you can land yourself a specific piece of gear from the menagerie chest using the chalice of opulence? Well it isn't as hard as you may think. So the menagerie offers a variety of different pieces of gear, a full set of armour as well as a variety of weapons. Armour pieces I believe may still have an element of RNG to them no matter the runes you use. The specific runes needed for each armour piece though are as follows. Helmets, rune of war applied to slot 1. Gauntlets, Rune of Cunning applied to slot 1. Chest pieces, Rune of Pleasure applied to slot 1. Legs, Rune of Gluttony applied to slot 1. Class items, Rune of Joy applied to slot 1. Armors I will say though I haven't quite worked out yet as I ain't sure if said armor drops with random traits. Now within the collections, the helmet for the hunter has more resilience than mobility and recovery. So you'd think to get this helmet, You'd use Rune of War in slot 1 and Rune of Ambition in slot 2 as you see Armour Road with this rune is guaranteed to have a resilience trait. And that's how this chalice works, specifically with weapons though. But the point I made earlier in I ain't sure if armors can drop with random traits is the point. If they don't and they are set, meaning the Hunter Helmet always has resilience, then this is a combo you'd need to use with rune slot 3 being a masterwork choice of your picking. And that's basically how these armour pieces are obtained from the menagerie. So armour pieces are a little more complicated to make out. But guys if this is indeed the way it works, then just simply go into your collections, go to the opulence, go to the specific armour piece you want, you know the runes that need to be applied in slot 1. If the armour piece you're checking out in your collections has recovery as a trait, has mobility as a trait, or has resilience as a trait, apply the correct rune into rune slot 2 in the chalice of opulence. That is, if it is confirmed, these armors do drop with set traits. But I cannot confirm that as of yet. And I mean, if I could, I would put together a list of how each armor piece is obtained, but at the moment, I can't confirm. So I won't guarantee it. Weapons though, which we will move on to now, I do know due to various research that these do indeed work. So to start, and how you can work this out for yourself. Let's use the Austringer hand cannon for example, the IS Luna reskin. Well firstly, you'd need to use the Rune of Desire in that slot 1. As you can see, this specifically drops hand cannons. And in slot 2, you'd need to use the Rune of Gluttony. Room 3, if you have it unlocked, you can use whatever you choose. So how does this work, you may be wondering. So we know what each rune now does and what they can drop when applied to slot 1. Rune slot 2, weapon wise, varies as there are 4 different weapon traits you can apply here. Low rounds per minute traits, average rounds per minute traits, high round per minute traits and excellent round per minute traits. With hand cannons there are 4 different firing speeds in the game. 110 rounds per minute, 140 rounds per minute, 150 rounds per minute and 180 rounds per minute. If you look at the Austringer within the collections we see it has a fire rate of 140. So that would tell you if the order in which these runes correspond with the fire rates is correct, the rune which offers the average rounds per minute trait should be applied to rune slot 2 if you want to obtain the Austringer. Now I know for a fact the Rune of Desire applied to slot 1 and the Rune of Gluttony applied to slot 2 does indeed drop the Austinger as I've had a few powers I've already tried and tested this. Now I ain't saying it's 100% guaranteed every time as there are other hand cannons in the game which share these traits also. But what I would think would be a thing because there are different levels of runes rarity wise, blue being the last ones you will unlock, no doubt using the rare runes in slot 2, Rune of Wealth for instance, might up your chance of getting the Menagerie exclusive loot. On screen now we can see uh, the combos I believe will work for each individual weapon we know the Menagerie offers at this current moment in time. Try these out, test them out, I do believe they will work, but obviously because it's early days I don't have the runes to try all this out myself. But no doubt guys, sooner or later this will be fully worked out and as soon as that happens, I will have you covered right here on my channel. As for now, experiment as it is early days like I said. Also linked within the video description is a comprehensive guide 
and which rune rolls what and so forth. It is linked via a spreadsheet and to be honest it's quite a lot to take in so in my opinion if I were you I'd get the basics first. But on that note guys we have come to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed it leaving a like really does help out. It did take me quite a while to actually put this together and figure this out. If you are new around here and this is what you want to see more of be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video I upload you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys thanks as always for stopping by, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.